Hello, welcome to my talk, The Future of Databases is Confidential. My name is Felix Schuster and I am one of the co-founders of a company called Edgeless Systems. And we are roughly 15 people and we're building open source software for Intel SGX and related technologies. And my talk today is about how we took MariahDB and moved it into Intel SGX Enclaves. Okay, to, to understand why we did this, let's take a look at the state of database security. And currently databases mostly consider external attackers, attackers that are outside the host that's running the database. And there are, abstractly there are two mechanisms to protect against these attackers. First one is encryption of incoming network connections and user authentication. The second one is, of course, encryption of data on disk. And these two are essential and they protect well against external attackers. However, once you consider internal attackers like malicious sysadmins or someone in your cloud infrastructure, then, of course, these mechanisms are not strong enough because someone who is in control of your host can easily circumvent them. And this is why we say we need something like HDSDB, a database that's running inside an isolated Intel SGX enclave. And this is what this talk is about. And the agenda for, the, for this talk is as follows. I'll give an intro to Intel SGX. I'll t talk about how to use HDSDB. Uh, I'll give a brief demo. And then I'll talk about the architecture and give, uh, give a comparison to related approaches and give some benchmark numbers. Okay, Intel SGX. Intel SGX is all about protecting sensitive workloads from threats on, in your hardware software stack. So for example, some, some, some malicious sysadmin being able to manipulate your operating system. And how this works is as follows. You as a programmer, you can ask the CPU to create what is called a secure enclave for you. And you can, you can essentially load arbitrary code and data into such an enclave. And an enclave has four defining security properties. First one is isolation. So enclaves are strongly isolated from the rest of the hardware software stack. Second one is runtime memory encryption. So all of the code and data that resides inside your enclave is strongly encrypted in memory at runtime. And the CPU moves, moves individual cache lines out of the RAM, decrypts it, and then processes them. And once they are, they are flushed from the cache to the memory, they are encrypted again. The third interesting feature is remote attestation. And maybe this is the most interesting one, actually. Uh, because an this feature allows an enclave to ask a CPU for a certificate that proves the integrity and the identity of the enclave. And you can think of this remote attestation statement as an X509 certificate, which are, for example, also used in TLS. And the, the fourth interesting feature is sealing. So, an enclave can ask the CPU to give it what is called a ceiling key, and the ceiling key is specific for an enclave and CPU combination. And no other enclave can, can get the same ceiling key. And an enclave can use this to securely keep state between invocations. And in HSDB, we use all of these four features, and this results in some interesting properties. There's also a limitation for enclaves, so you cannot use syscalls, so you cannot use talk directly to your operating system. And this also has some implications. Enclaves are available on many recent Intel CPUs, for example, the third generation Xeon processors, which we focus on, and they are also available in some clouds, for example, Azure and Diali Cloud. And here's how, how to use HSDB and what, what it does. So, as I said, HSDB is a database that's running, or MariahDB Fox is running entirely inside SGX enclaves, and I'll get to the architecture in a second. 
But here are the steps of using it. And first step is you run the Docker image like, as normal. Second step is you verify the remote attestation statement of the database. And third, and this is I think quite interesting, you create and set what we call a manifest. And I'll give you an example of a manifest in, in the demo. But the manifest, it defines the initial state of the database, including all the users that can access the database. And the fourth step is simple. You connect your clients as normal. And the fifth step, what, under certain circumstances, you may require to recover your database. And this is something that's also specific to Azure SDB. OK, let's go to the demo then. OK, here I am connected to an Intel SGX enabled machine in, in Azure. And what I can do now is I can simply one second. Here I'm now connected to an Intel SGX enabled machine in Azure. And what I can do now is I can just here I am now connected to an Intel SGX enabled machine in Azure. And what I can do now is I can simply pull our Docker image from, from, from GitHub and run it while handing over the SGX device. And this takes some time, but there it is. And now it's saying it's waiting for the manifest. And now let's initialize this database, give it a manifest. How this works is as follows. Um, we're now at step two, the, ver the verification step. And we have a tool for that. It's called error. And the error tool connects to, to the database on, on, on a RESTful API. And it checks remote attestation statement of the database with respect to a certain config. And if that checks out, it outputs the public key of the database. OK, that worked. We now have a edb.pem, which is a public key of the database. And the tool checked that this thing is indeed running inside an SGX enclave and is running the expected software. So what we can do now next is we can, based on the certificate, we can set up a secure connection that terminates inside the enclave and send over our manifest, again by our REST API. And the manifest looks like this. This is what we want to send over. And the structure of the manifest is quite simple. There is an SQL statement, which is the initial, which sets up the initial state of the database. And in this case, we just want to create some users and grant them access rights on, on a table. And the second entry in this manifest is the certificate authority with respect to which the users are to be authenticated. And yeah, we can now just send this over with curl using the public key we've gotten in the, in, in the previous step and send that to the slash manifest endpoint of the, of the database. Yep, that worked. Now we have an initialized database. There it is. And now we can just keep, we can, we can just use it as normal, as normal RiaDB and use, for example, the MySQL command line interface to connect to it. And here again, we use the edb.pem to verify the identity of the host to make sure that we are actually talking to the database that we verified in the, in the first step. And we use a and on the client side for connecting, we use a certificate that complies with the CA or was issued by the CA. Um, yep, so let's connect. Here we are. Select current user, that worked. So we logged in as the root user, defined the manifest. And yep, that is, that's it. That's how easy it is to set up and verify an Azure SDB instance in, in Azure.
let's get back to the slides. Here we are. Okay, this was a demo. Um, so there are two use cases for HSDB. First one is increased security. So you can just take your existing MariaDB and replace it, replace it with HSDB and you get all the benefits of running things inside an SGX enclave. And the second use case is you can create new apps um, with interesting properties. So you can use a manifest feature to define certain aspects of your database and then you can prove to other parties that these properties are in place and then you can use it as a foundation to build interesting applications. For example, to exchange privacy relevant data. Okay, let's talk about the, the architecture. Unsurprisingly, it starts with an Intel SGX enclave and inside that we have MariaDB, which is largely unmodified. And to some surprise, maybe, um, we don't use the default InnoDB as storage backend, but we rather use RocksDB in a modified form. And I have some reasons for that on the next slide, so, so bear with me. Next, we have what we call our confidential computing frontend. And this is a REST API, the one that we used in the demo to, to set up and verify the, the database. And there are essentially four endpoints for different things. Uh, they, they, they're quite easy to use. And this is written in Go, and so we also have a Go runtime inside the enclave. And this now all runs on our in-enclave environment called HSRT, which creates the illusion of a POSIX environment inside the enclave. And this in turn relies on the Open Enclave project. And yeah, HSRT and Open Enclave are the only ones able of doing syscalls. So whenever they need to do a syscall, they actually go outside the enclave and execute the syscall. And all the other components rely on HSRT and Open Enclave to talk to the outside world, mostly for network I.O. and file I.O. Okay, so why RocksDB? A um, couple of reasons. First one is reusability. So RocksDB can be used standalone. RocksDB is used in other projects. So we figured um, if we made RocksDB fit for the enclave, this can come in handy in other projects or for ourselves in the future. Um, the second reason is that RocksDB relies on an interesting data structure called log structured merge trees to store its data. And this data structure has two important properties. First one is that it typically does fewer writes or requires fewer writes than other data structures. And this means less enclave transitions to write to disk. And this means less overhead. And the second important property is that LSMTs have immutable data files. So they are Data files are written once and are then never changed. And this comes in handy when we want to encrypt these. So the data is stored in so-called SST files. And SST files are written in blocks. And we encrypt each individual block using AES GCM and a file-specific key. And as initialization vector, we use each block's file offset. And this way we pin the blocks inside the file and prevent reordering, for instance. And this way we get overall file integrity without requiring something like a merger tree. Um, we also encrypt all the other files and all depends on the enclave's master file in the end. And in the interest of time, I, don't, I can't really go into detail here, but the property that we're getting out of here is that we get global integrity and confidentiality for the entire data, database state. And we'll have a blog post on that soon where we'll discuss the details on that. All right, so final part, comparison and benchmarks. So let's compare the high level properties of HSCB against state-of-the-art database security. 
So with a normal DB, you can, of course, have encryption on disk, and you don't require special hardware. That's great. But you don't get runtime protection for keys or runtime protection for code or data, and you also don't get verifiability. If you look at the next best thing currently, which is a normal database plus HSM, then you get runtime protection for keys, but you also need to acquire or, or rent expensive hardware. And with HSCB and Intel SGX, you get quite a few check marks on the right. And if you're already running on Xeon hardware, you also don't need to acquire any special hardware. Yeah, so we believe that running databases inside SGX enclaves or related technologies really is a way forward for database security. Um, yeah, so an alternative to our approach would be to take vanilla MariahDB and take a library OS, for example, the Grameen project or the Optum project, and run that unmodified inside an Intel SGX enclave. Um, that would certainly work with some effort. You, you, you will run into some crashes and some unsupported syscalls, possibly. Um, at least we did. But you will eventually succeed. But there will still be some drawbacks. And primarily, these will be the following. So first, you won't have any performance optimizations. So you may see higher, higher overhead than we are seeing. Um, you won't have the database-specific verifiability features, or the, and you won't have the manifest feature, and you will, have, you will certainly have weaker security guarantees for your overall database state. Because the disk encryption provided by, by these libraries is typically not engineered to provide overall integrity for all files. Okay, so here are some benchmarks. We use the well-known TPCC benchmark, which is an online transaction processing benchmark with 10 warehouses and 10 tables, um, eight threads on an Intel Xeon processor on Azure. And yeah, the, the numbers are here. Um, summary is the overhead is roughly 29% um, for transactions and queries. Um, we think that's pretty good. And the baseline here is actually MariahDB with, with MyRox, because in this case, um, this was quite a bit faster than vanilla MariahDB with, 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 with InnoDB. Um, but, but this can, of course, vary or will vary depending on the configuration of your TPCC. Conclusion. Um, HSCB brings MariahDB to Intel SGX enclaves and adds some cool features, including advanced verifiability features and some, some enclave-grade disk encryption that protects against active attackers trying to, to mess with your files. Um, it increases security and enables new interesting use cases where you can use the database as a, as a ground to, to, to exchange data, for instance, based on, on, on rules defined in the manifest. Um, all the code is, of course, are freely available on GitHub, and we're looking forward to your issues, pull requests, and stars. And if anything comes up, please feel free to shoot me a mail or find me on, on GitHub or, or Twitter. Um, and that's it. Thank you for listening. See you soon.